Today, we're going to be presenting a talk called The Collaborative to Increase Financial Literacy Across Different Medical School Curricula. My name is Dr. Stephanie Zhao, and myself, as well as Drs. Healy, Dr. Premji, and Dr. Pham are representing University of Toronto. Bonjour tout le monde, je m'appelle Pascal Gendreau. I am from McGill. I am the UGME Wellness Consultant, and I am representing um, Sonia Raimi and also uh, Nathalie Saad, and we are all working at the Well Office at McGill. So we have no conflict of interest to declare, as well as no financial interest. And I think this is really important because everything that we're going to show you today, our financial literacy curriculum, our financial wellness curriculums, all of the all of those talks are also conflict of interest free. Voila, so we think it's a really important piece of, of these talks. Um, today, we're going to talk about the need for a financial literacy curriculum. The aim of this talk is really for you to see two sample financial literacy curricula as a guide for developing your own, uh, your own, your own curriculum at your own institution. We're going to start with McGill, uh, and then uh, Stephanie is going to talk about the U of T's curriculum. And at the end, we're going to talk, talk about future directions. So why is there a need for financially, financial literacy curriculum? So year after year of looking at graduating students' debt levels, the data is usually the same. A bimodal distribution of student debt levels where you have a group of students graduating with no debt and students graduating with high levels of debt. But when you look at the majority of students on average, they are graduating with about 100K in debt. While this data reveals a socioeconomic gap between students, the bigger question is what is the impact of high debt and low financial literacy on students? So in doing a literature search, three themes emerge. The first is with each increase in tuition, access to medical education decreased particularly for families of low socioeconomic status. In order for low SES students to afford medical school, they will need to accrue higher levels of debt. Number two, when you look at medical alumni, a majority of them believe that financial education should have been taught in medical school, yet only a small percentage received such education. And number three, high debt debt levels do impact students' mental wellness and academic performance, and this does impact their choice of specialty. So when 609 students and residents at the following universities were surveyed on how they were getting their financial advice, the biggest source was family members, with medical school and residency being a resource for fewer students. So the inherent inequity with this is that those from wealthier families who might have access to financial expertise um, you know, are getting better uh, financial advice, whereas those from financially illiterate uh, families might not be getting the right info. Without standardized financial education in medical school and residency, how do we know that students are financially prepared when they graduate with that? So when developing our financial literacy curriculum, um, I surveyed medical students and uh, residents on the Physicians Financial Independence Facebook group, as well as in my classes. Hundreds and hundreds of students and residents responded. And using this data, we tailored our curriculum to address those topics of interest. We used U Ottawa's M Life Financial Curriculum Objectives as a guide, and we tailored our own curricula to what our students want to know. So now I'm gonna pass it on to Pascal to discuss McGill's financial curriculum structure. McGill Financial Wellness Curriculum is part of a bigger curriculum that we have called the Wellness Curriculum, and we actually have published in the Whole Person Journal Care Whole Person Care Journal about uh, this um, this curriculum. So throughout the four years, we have numerous talks and workshops that are happening during protected uh, um, teaching time, and. Um, we are basing all of those talks on the six dimensions of wellness of Hetler. But we felt that something was missing. Sorry, Hetler. But we felt like financial wellness was definitely missing. So this is something that we've added to our curriculum. Each year, we have one financial uh, uh, talk that is really tailored to where they are at their training um, uh, during either first, second, third, and fourth year. And actually, we're going to zone into the, to those trainings that we're, we give them um, throughout the four years. So in first year, it's really a recent graduate who is talking about improving their relationship with money. It's happening during block C, the heart relationships. We talk about, you know, what is their relationship with money? Uh, in second year, we have, we're very lucky to have Dr. Stephanie Zhu uh, come in talking about financial myth, reducing death, managing a line of credit, um, things that are really important to know early on. 
And then in third year, of course, we're going to help students prepare them for CARMS applications, uh, projecting themselves into what's going to happen for residency, what's going, what's happening next. And in fourth year, um, I really like this title, it's a bit long, but the pearls your staff wish they could tell their younger selves about personal finances. So it's all about things that I wish I had known, and we know about when it comes to money, um, early decisions can make a really big impact in the long run. Um, we also have a self-directed uh, learning page on our website where we talk, uh, where there's different information, different videos, uh, books, recommendations that at any time th throughout their training, they can visit. If, for example, they missed first year's talk, they can still visit it even in, in, when they're for, in their fourth year if they want to have do some catch up. So voila, we're pretty proud of what we do. And students have been, you know, been very appreciative of all this work because it's all been done by people who have no conflict of interest, and that is a key. Let's hear what Toronto is doing. Sounds good. So for U of T's financial curriculum in our first year, um, we work with the financial aid office to talk about what scholarships and grants are available to students. And we also talk about the line of credit, how to obtain a line of credit, um, how to appropriately use your line of credit, and budgeting. We also do a bit of intro to financial literacy. So for example, what is a TFSA? What is an RRSP? You know, what is, um, what do those accounts um, stand for? What do they mean? In our second year, so this is the consistent second year with uh, McGill's curriculum. So I'll be giving the talk about managing debt and money myths, which are the top mistakes that people make as a medical student, for instance. Um, doctors Jane and Paul Healy give the talk about financial professionals and products. So what does an accountant do? What does a lawyer do? What does a banker do? And so on. Um, and then Dr. Pham gives the talks about health system financing physician supplies. So how much do doctors get paid? How do doctors get paid? In our third year, we're looking into developing two lectures, particularly around CARMS. So far, CARMS has been um, on hold, so there hasn't really been that much traveling, um, visiting electives, and so on. But when that does start up again, we're looking into how do we um, use credit card points um, to maximize um, you know, discounts on travel and things like that, as well as alternative MD careers, right? What are people doing after graduating, res uh, graduating medical school or residency, but not necessarily um, being a doctor? And then in fourth year, um, we're looking into how do we pay back loans um, and how does that work across provinces? We have office hours, um, so that's just for a free for all for students to ask questions. And then OMA gives the insurance talk. And in addition, you might notice, you know, there might not be that much um, talk about investing, which is what the number one thing students want to know. So in collaboration with Dow Housie, um, we invited Ben Felix um, to talk about um, investing for beginners and um, our students have access to that for free on YouTube. Um, as well, I do a talk about disability insurance to kind of make it a bit more uh, unbiased as well. And uh, given that U of T does have a pretty large MD PhD population, um, we have uh, extra, you know, a, a talk on financial literacy specific to the MD PhD situation um, that's, that was given outside of class. And given that Toronto is a very diverse uh, city and we also have a lot of students from very diverse backgrounds. We have a section called the Social Determinants of Wealth, which is pretty unique to U of T's curriculum. Um, and it talks about things like the minority tax, um, intergenerational debt, or the gender wage gap. Overall, this curriculum was evaluated quite highly by students, um, you know, ranking it um, in terms of the evaluations higher than other courses um, from the same department or from other compared to other lecturers. And a lot of students really emphasize that uh, they wish they had more of this time to talk about uh, financial literacy in the curriculum. In terms of future directions, so naturally that would be residents and early career physicians. So um, we've developed um, family medicine billing specifically to the family medicine residents. And there's also a conference in November um, in financial literacy month for early career and late career staff physicians on a more bit of a more of a one-stop shop uh, financial literacy conference. And finally, I also wanted to highlight some of the work that uh, Dalhousie is doing as well with their medical mini MBA program. Um, and they presented um, on their research um, and the development of their um, financial literacy curriculum at the conference as well. So that concludes our presentation. And now we're open to taking any questions. Merci tout le monde.